Yes, ma'am. It started. Good. Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. This is our nineteenth lecture, and uh, we uh, following are the things that we have looked at in the uh, first five weeks. This is our sixth week, and most importantly, in the last week, we have introduced arrays. We have used arrays for several things, and in fact, we have seen uh, specific examples where. Arrays, or whenever we are given a stream of data, we feel that we would like to use arrays to store them. However, many times, for example, in the histograms example, you you did not even require to store the marks of all the people in the arrays. A smaller set of uh, a smaller set of entries was required to be stored in the array, which was the uh, zero to twenty marks, assuming non-negative marks, and those were the ones for which you stored the. Uh, you had an array and then you kept the frequency count used just looking at every mark so that was the first problem that we did then we of course did polynomial evaluation and there we learned how to improve on the number of multiplications that we did in a particular uh, problem then we looked at searching algorithms the first one that we saw is linear search and then we looked at uh, binary search which which is possible only when the array given to you is already sorted and therefore the natural question was how to do sorting so we looked at two sorting algorithms one which was uh, the selection sort the other which was the insertion sort and uh, i hope all of you looked at the slides towards the end and uh, there was one method of insertion sort that we did not cover which uh, actually did not uh, swap things but actually moves uh, overrides on the right hand side and keeps doing this by saving one into saving the uh, element at index j i hope you looked at that method and also the link at which i had given you the uh, comparison of uh, different sorting algorithms on different kinds of input so i hope uh, most of you looked at that in case you haven't looked at that please do look at it and see how different sorting algorithms behave so are there any questions about uh, the parts that we have discussed because this week we are going to start new material uh, which is character arrays multi dimensional arrays and then uh, not in today's class but we will introduce functions so any questions comments on the sorting or anything so how many of you looked at the link and uh, played i mean uh, played those simulations nobody okay is it bubble sort which is bubble sort uh so raghav you have asked this question is it bubble sort uh no so the the bubble sort is different the bubble sort in which the in the case of bubble sort the uh maximum bubble maximum or minimum bubbles to its right position instead of selection sort in which you take the maximum and you put it at the correct position it again doesn't have this invariant that the first i elements that we have looked at are sorted the way insertion sort has it so uh, bubble sort is a different sorting algorithm which we haven't covered but uh, it it the one which we covered is indeed insertion sort okay okay so uh, there are a very few handful of people who have said that i watched this uh, which is which i appreciate that people who watched it but the people who have watched it are saying that it is very interesting so people who have not watched it i certainly recommend you to go and look at that link i would have really liked to play it here in the class if it were in the correct correct context on that day but we ran out of time so it's uh, certainly interesting for you to try out different uh, orders and look at how does how do different sorting algorithms perform and converge to the sorted order on uh, on different kinds of input so it's very uh, very interesting to see so please take a look at it when you get time and the link is there on the uh, in the slides for the last class okay so having said that uh, what are our learnings Uh, and the learning was again imposed or or reemphasized in the lab material that we gave you 
that is whenever you are given a problem you are supposed to write pseudo code for that think about the uh, think about how would you solve that problem the first uh, solution that you think of may not be the best one or may not be the optimal one in terms of many things it may also not be the correct one so you have to hand run your program through several uh, so through through a couple of examples especially corner cases and then uh, if once you are convinced that your program is correct you should you should try to look at are there is there a scope for improvement just like what you did in the uh, lab problem where you had you were given uh, something which was looking like a nested loop and then you uh, you you did away with the nested loop the reason for this is not always efficiency it is also simplicity of coding the simpler code you or the pseudo code you design you are going to write better make fewer mistakes and so on so it is in your interest to think about it before coding and these examples we have given at multiple places during gcd during uh, uh, prime factorization and so on and we'll keep iterating as them as we go along okay so having said that let's uh, go to our uh, topic that we want to start today which is character arrays so we are already familiar with integer arrays so uh, now today we are going to start with character arrays character arrays occur very frequently and therefore they are uh, very useful to us and therefore there is a very uh, nicely written library which is called as string.h in c and other languages also expose uh, libraries for strings so a character array is defined in the same way you do an integer array that is let's say your uh, character array is called name which will store the name of some person i am assuming that the character array i mean the name is a small name that is why i have given only 20 as the size of the character array and uh, this this is the same uh, syntax that is char uh the variable name which is name here and then of course in the square brackets the size of the array so uh we have also seen initializing an array when it when we had the integer array and the way we had seen it was this format where we said that um, char uh, whatever sorry int something and then the individual elements were written using a comma separated thing and there were curly braces around it so if you wrote that you would have said that the integer array is initialized in that with those values we had also mentioned in the class that if you have something which is so if you have an array size which is in this case 20 but you have only five things which are initialized this will initialize a of 0 not a name of 0 to a name of 1 to capital b name of uh, uh 2 to capital a and so on and till 5 you have initialized when you don't have anything what will be the remaining things get initialized to what was it initialized in case of uh, integer arrays zero so it is not null or something it is zero so the same thing zero is going to be put in the uh, remaining parts whenever there is nothing this is the same as character uh, integer arrays that is if you had it had an integer array of size 20 and you just had five elements initialized let's say the first five elements were 1 2 3 4 5 then from uh, the uh, the uh, name of 6 it would get initialized or whatever a if the a is the integer array then a of 6 it would get initialized to 0 so in this case uh, this is also going to get initialized to 0 now there is something that you must be familiar with that there is a slash 0 which is the termination of a string which is so whenever you are saying that this character array so when i say that this this is the first kind of initialization which is here when i say that this char name is equal to char name 20 is equal to avani uh, this means of course um, upper case and lower case are distinguished therefore this avani and this avani are different but in this case there is an implicit slash 0 so there is name of 6 uh, which is initialized to slash 0 so what is slash 0 slash 0 is a special character which has ascii value which is 0 so 
as long as uh, you are looking only at the ascii value which is so remember that we know that it is only a bit representation so whatever is present there is going to be rep is going to be interpreted as a character because we know that the type of that element is a character character and not an integer therefore that is going to be that that, that is written as zero but it is when it is interpreted as a character it is interpreted as the slash zero character which is a special character which terminates any string so is that clear uh, to people who have asked what is it slash zero or zero yes Ma'am, uh, why would it be in uh, the sixth index, ma'am? It should be in the fifth index, ma'am. Okay, so let me see. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. You are right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I should not have said sixth. It, it is at the fifth index. Yeah. It is at the fifth index that you will have zero. Similarly, in this case, although this is a different character array, after this, I mean, cap it. It has been initialized with caps. But after, I mean, from name of five, everything has been initial. Everything will have its value zeros just because. the way integer arrays had that right so this this is the same thing except that uh, when you write it this way they it, implicitly we think that there is we have this slash zero in mind whose ascii value is zero okay um, the other yeah ma'am yeah, and so we should always have one extra uh, one extra character in our array like if we need to read exactly. avani then we have to allocate six spaces is it true or just yes so if you want to write any string you if the string has a length k then you must have an array of k plus 1 size because you will have the string of length k followed by a slash 0 so slash 0 is considered as the terminator for the string and many string libraries depend or assume this fact that the strings are terminated with slash 0 therefore you must have that unless you are redefine everything redefining everything is that clear yes ma'am yeah good ma'am okay ma'am yes ma'am yeah. in the first uh, way of initialization we will have a slash zero index fine ma'am after that will we have uh, zeros filled in the remaining boxes or uh, will yes. be zeros zeros will be filled in the remaining boxes yes as yes, one second second initialization we won't have a slash zero in the Index, right? Actually, wait. So, just hold on. Sorry. So, I am not sure whether in the first initialization slash zero, I mean zeros will be inserted in the remaining part. But as long as you are reading it, reading a string in this name, I mean reading or interpreting it as a string or a character array, it doesn't matter because everything terminated after, I mean everything after the slash zero is considered as, I mean the string is terminated after the slash zero. So. let me just for the sake of uh, uh, i mean sake of this example i just say this char name 20 is equal to avani which means that 0 1 2 3 4 are initialized appropriately with the characters given here then name of 5 contains slash 0 and suppose i say name of 6 is equal to p right it doesn't mean that the it it when you print as percent s uh, name it is not going to print out avani p it is going to print out only avani so uh, even if you write anything so i i take back my words I, i am not sure whether this will initialize the remaining part to zero and we should not rely on the remaining part being initialized to zero in this initialization but this will initialize uh, name of 5 to be slash zero and that is sufficient for us because if there is anything after that that is going to be ignored however here it will be initialized to everything else will be initialized to zero because we have given fewer than the number of uh, uh, things that we want number of array elements that we want ma'am yeah yes ma'am if we print name of 6 what will it print like junk value or like if we had given name of 6 as p or something will it print p or will... if you have initialized name of 6 and if you try to print percent c name of 6 it will print out whatever it is there i am not saying that it will not print out but if you if you write printf percent s name then it won't print out so maybe we can try it out so how many people would like to do that on the repl.it then i'll go there okay so uh, 
Okay, so let's try it out and uh, okay. So when we give letter by letter, we need to give an explicit slash zero, uh, but otherwise we don't need to. Yes, so remember that even if you don't give an explicit slash zero here, which I should have given ideally, but even if you don't give the remaining parts, we know that the array initialization when there are fewer elements is going to initialize it to zero and zero when interpreted as a character is actually slash zero because the ASCII value for ASCII value for slash zero itself is zero. So that makes it convenient for us to not write it, but have it implicitly for us. So what we will do is we will just go to repel.it. Somebody please tell me uh, that <clears throat> the screen sharing is uh, properly done. So I'll stop this sharing. Okay. Uh, Okay, so Prakhar, can you tell me whether it is uh, visible? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay, so I, I also wanted to show you this uh, good that I, uh, so let's say that I have defined, so I hope it is visible. There is a simple program where I have said char name and I have given it only four characters, which is certainly not sufficient. I should at least give it six characters and uh, I have said, uh, uh, name is equal to Avani, in which case it the compiler itself cribs. For example, you see here, I'm just going to compile this program. Uh, so it gives a warning that this initializer string for arrays is too long. If I give five, it doesn't crib and it is okay with that, but it is something that is not uh, recommended because all uh, uh, string libraries or gen I mean standard string functions assume that it is terminated by a slash zero but you don't have space to write a slash zero. So gcc uh, main dot c and uh, so this doesn't crib it shows you correctly but you you cannot believe I mean you cannot uh, you should not do this you should in fact write this where uh, and just for the sake of this thing, I am going to do printf uh, percent c. Mm, so last character equal to, and I am going to say name of six. Sorry. So the last character is zero. I mean, it is slash zero, so it is nothing. And but it's printing it out there. Last character is zero. It's not printable. I should just do slash n, but doesn't matter. So everybody sees that there is a slash slash ca last character which is being printed out, and that is something which is the null null term. I mean, the string terminator. Now, what you wanted to uh, do is the following: the same thing that it is twenty. It means that this. In fact, the name six will, uh, okay, so I, I think I'm still making a mistake, right? It is not six, it should have been five. Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so I think, uh, sorry, I, sorry, I, I somehow feel that uh, AVA and I has uh, six things, so I'm sorry about that, but I hope you get the message. Now, um, you, you'll see that, uh, so zero, one, two, three, four, and the fifth character is the null terminator or okay, string terminator. And let's say I explicitly do name of uh, six is equal to p, and then printf. Uh, character at sixth index equal to percent C. So that will be there. Uh, okay, so what I want to also print is the um, name. So I, I would like to do this earlier, right? Uh, 
I would like to do this later, both these statements. Yeah, so please ignore my indentation, but otherwise the program seems okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, so you see that although we have initialized something in uh, name of six, that won't get printed when you print out percent %s uh, the name. The last character, which is name of five, of course, it is not the last character in that array, but that is what we think is the last character and therefore that is slash zero. And then character at index six remains to be p. So that that initialization won't, uh, I mean, be destroyed, uh, destroyed but uh, you won't be able to print it like that with name of p. So uh, with name. So that that I hope that is clear to everybody. So is there any question here? So I think one of the questions was that uh, we. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so is the screen blank for others also? I no, think there's no, it's fine. Sure. No, it's fine. Okay, okay, sure. Okay, fine. yeah, fine. So, uh, yeah, so is there any question about this in general? I mean, for anybody? But if it was name of i equal to p, then it would print a 1 e p. Name of 5 equal to p. p. Yes, then, then it, it is. A 1 e p. A 1 e p, yes, then it would print a 1 e p. But then you are still not having it as a, uh, uh, you are not having the sla slash zero termination, right? So you are messing up with that. Unless you say name of six is equal to slash p, this is not a valid string. Is that clear? I can do that. You, you see the this thing, right? Okay. So, uh, So, yeah, so it happens that the sixth character is uh, something which is uh, slash zero. Therefore, it, it will be still okay as a string, but you should not rely on that unless you explicitly do that. Is it clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the question is that uh, can, can't we store a name like Avani space Kumar? You can save a name like Avani space Kumar. Uh, so, okay, so let's do it here. So I'm going to uh, just remove these for the moment, which are not useful for us right now. So this is how Avani space Kumar is stored, but space is a different character than slash zero. Space does not have its uh, uh, as key value as zero. So space is a different character which is treated like this. However, I want to warn you now that this question has come up. If come up, if you do scan f uh, percent s, and if you want to fill in Avani Kumar with the space, you won't be able to do that using scan f because as soon as you enter a space or a new line or a tab, it will be considered as a next input that you are going to give. Therefore, you that won't be considered in that same string. So if you want to do that, you will have to use a different function which is get s but at the moment we'll just mention that we'll come to it when we introduce functions and we'll come to this get s function so we can store it uh, as if you have initialized it here but you cannot do it when you are doing a scan f because this space won't be allowed okay initialization cannot be done with single quotes and double quotes it's completely different single quotes is a character and remember that okay so now i'm going to stop sharing this REPL.IT and go to the slides again uh, just give me a moment stop sharing and uh, Okay, so uh, please see this that uh, when you are initializing it as a string, then it is fine to say this uh, double quotes. This is correct. Whenever you are doing this, this is an individual character. Therefore, you must do it using a single quote. And there is, of course, this scanf, which is like this. 
However, what is not allowed is once you have in, once you have defined this care name twenty later on in the program, even as a next line, you will not be allowed to say name is equal to Avani like this. Only during initialization you are allowed to do uh, uh, this kind of a string initialization. Otherwise, of course, you can do name of zero is equal to a, name of one is equal to b, name of uh, two is equal to a, and so on, which is the character. Uh, respective character, but not the string. So I hope it answers your question. This is this the last way which is given. Then it is not the name. The, this is not the place where name has been defined. This is not how you can initialize that array. Initialize that character array. Okay. So uh, okay, good. So I was coming to that. So Pramod has had pra. Yeah, Pramath, I think, has asked this question. So in scanf, shouldn't there be an and uh, character or I mean the name itself? I mean this character array. When you are having this arrays, the uh, the variable itself, this it's the this name itself means the address of that array. Therefore, you don't need to give. Uh, the address of that explicitly you can give address but you don't need to give the address of that explicitly does it answer your question okay. yes so we can give the ambus symbol before names huh? or yes, we should you not can huh? uh, like i was trying in the normal compiler it, 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 it came out to be an error actually and didn't work for me. It gave an error. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, so uh, so what compiler are you trying? No, oh, it's just run. Uh, I think it's um, yes, yeah, online GDB. Okay, so uh, actually, uh. At least on REPL.IT, if you try it, it will give you a warning, but it won't give you a error. Uh, it says it expects type char star, but it has a char star. I mean char star star, so it will give you a, a warning. So in fact, let's just stick to this that we whenever you are doing a scanf of an array and a character array specifically, because you can scan a character array directly. Uh, unlike an integer array where you, you are going to have to scan it using a loop, you are going to give it as without the uh, and, but just give it like this without that. Is that clear? Because it is already telling you the address of the uh, character array or any array. So, yeah, so it will give you only a warning. It won't give you an error. Yeah, at least on REPL.IT it also it gives the same thing. Okay, so we will stick to this that we won't be using and for this uh, scanf of character arrays. When you are using scan, when you are initializing it in this way. Okay, so having said this, uh, this is only about the initialization of the character array, and I'm happy that there were so many questions because there it there is a subtle difference between character arrays, and that is why we did not introduce them in a hurry with the integer arrays because there is some small difference about them and peculiarity about them. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I want you to study this program and now that we have already seen the REPL.IT, I think this is uh, possibly slightly simple for you so don't, you don't have to think about it too much, but what would be the output of uh, this program? So in fact, we did exactly what similar things to this. So uh, so it is initializing name of zero to name of uh, four with this zero one two three four, and then uh, there is uh, a slash zero, and then from ten onwards, it is making name of i equal to the character x. So up to nineteen, it is putting this x in that uh, character array so what we, what do you expect when you print f percent s name i mean name is equal to and this variable name what do you expect as we have seen it will only print out the uh, name avani and not the xxx uh, that that is that that we have written later because 
it just looks at the string till it encounters the first slash zero, which it will encounter just after this i, and therefore it will print out that. However, when you print out uh, character by character, which you can do, which we did earlier, just for one character, then you will see that these initial things will be the uh, appropriate characters a, b, a, and i. But then afterwards from 10 to 19, you will print out X and of course it's ASCII code because we are printing the character and printing out its ASCII code. So I think this we already did in the uh, earlier discussion. So this program is uh, slightly simpler for us. So good. Uh, yeah, so I will just look at if there, there was some question about um, Okay, so how will we get input like Rahul space Verma? I already mentioned that, that if you want to do that, you cannot use scanf. You will have to use a different function, which is getS. We will come to that function a little later. But if you use scanf, you won't be able to give spaces in, in your strings. You can give a single, a single string without spaces. Does it answer your question, Rahul? Okay. Uh, um, I have a doubt. Oh. Yes. I mean, the previous slide is with the second. So, Satyajit, you are not audible. Can you hear me, ma'am? Better, but speak a little louder. Can you hear me yeah. now, ma'am? Yes, go ahead. With the second initialization, how to print the tower, ma'am? Should we use loop or simply print percentages name? How to see what? How to print the full name Avani? Should we? Uh, so, yeah, so these initializations do not, they are all equivalent. I mean, in fact, this is saying, I mean, of course, if I would have written this as cap, caps, all of them, then it is initializing using the same thing. But I did not write the caps. So these are different arrays. But these are initialized. I mean, they are same kind of strings. So if you want to print them, you just say percent %s name and it will print it out as long as it doesn't encounter the first slash zero. Okay. So one thing that, uh, yeah, is it clear Satyajit? Yes ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, so you just use printf percent %s name to print out. In any way you would have initialized it, either using the first way, using the second way or using a scanf where you have the user as input uh, uh, name as Avani. Right? Okay. Good. So, uh, let's move on. So, as I said in the initial part of the class, uh, these character arrays or strings often, uh, very often occur in, uh, uh, in, uh, in practice, we need to deal with them. And therefore, C provides us a very nice library, uh, which exposes this uh, useful functions, which is the length of the string, string compare, string copy, str, str, and so on. And uh, you don't need to learn them by heart. You don't need to memorize what function does what. If at all it is required, we'll provide it to you. In fact, what we will do is we will recreate some of these uh, uh, library functions, just like we said that SQRT is a function that we uh, we know how to, I mean, use, but we also wrote a approximation to SQRT using some simple bisection method and Newton Raphson method. So what we are going to do in the uh, next part of the class is take some simple string functions, implement them. They will again expose us to some of the uh, nuances of dealing with character arrays or strings and also see how possibly this string.h is implementing these functions. So, uh, okay, so just to get a sense, how many of you have tried to implement these, some of these functions, str, len, you, you know, I mean, I know that you all of you have done coding and therefore, you know, uh, all these functions exist. So, how many of you have possibly uh, implemented some of these functions? Okay, so when you write yes, please write, please write what functions you have implemented. Okay. Okay. 
so first three seem to be uh, known to people which is good so what we will do is we are going to do first two and another uh, thing which is not given as a string.h function but which is a useful thing which uh, allows us to uh, do some more exercising with the character arrays okay so the first one is string length which we require very often to know what is the length of the string because as we have done uh, this name is a character array which is of size 20 but the string length that is there is only what is the length of the string which is a b a n i which is 5 and therefore it is stored from 0 to 4 in our uh, character array so we just have the string length to be 5 right so that is what we know we need to know at many points and many times and therefore we need to know the length of the string that is uh, uh, stored in that character array so uh, this is our first task which is to uh, given a string as an input and whenever i say string now it is given to us as a character array so we'll be only dealing with uh, character arrays as strings there is no a uh, basic data type as string in the case of c uh, unlike c++ where there is a string class but we don't have anything like that in c so we will be dealing with character arrays okay so as we have developed this habit that we are going to first write pseudo code which tells us what is the idea what is uh, what is our idea so <coughs> So from i ranging uh, for i ranging from 1 to n so uh, is it 1 to n in fact no in we know that character array i mean any array in c starts with 0 from 0 to whatever is the size of the array we are going to check that if the character at that index is a null character if it is a null character then we are going to break else so sorry uh, else we are going to increment i and then whatever is there in i is going to be the length of the string so just to make sure that it is uh, it it gives you correctly let's look at the code for this so it is going to check uh, it is a, this character uh, character array s is something which has a size which is 1000 doesn't mean that the string that is going to be stored in that will have 1000 size but it can be much shorter or smaller than this and we have scanned the string using percent %s the user has input that and then for i is equal to 0 to uh, 0 till the point uh, i doesn't s of i that is the character at that index doesn't become equal to slash 0 we are going to run the loop but inside the loop there is nothing much except increment i and note that the way we are incrementing is uh, here it's a pre-increment done as we have said that this is something that is going to be uh, done every I mean this is something which is equivalent to i is equal to i plus 1 so that is what we are going to do so does this correctly print out the length of the string okay any issues with this code Okay, so somebody has said no semicolon after this for loop. So that semicolon is uh, given to tell that there is nothing that is to be done inside the length, inside the for loop that is, uh, there is no statement inside the for loop. Janisha, does it clear your doubt? Okay, so just one uh, comment that I want to make is that uh, this s of i is not equal to slash slash zero character is the check that we are doing. Remember the for loop syntax where it is statement one, then there is expression and then there is this statement two, which is, or I don't know whether we called it statement three here, but uh, this is the expression that is going to get tested. So if this expression, you can also write it as while s of i is not equal to 0. That is also okay because slash 0's uh, ASCII value itself is 0 and therefore it is okay to test it with 0. That is also perfectly fine. 
Okay, any question here? Okay, so since many of you have written this, I will go to the next thing that is uh, given two strings. Uh, can we compare these two strings whether they are same or not? So just a moment, there is some question. Can we initialize separately and give value separately? So I did not understand Shwetika, what is the question? Okay, so for the moment I'll skip it. Maybe she has got disconnected or she's not there. Okay, so we are given two strings S1 and S2 and we want to check if they are the same strings. So when we say same strings, they, they should be exactly the same. Uppercase and lowercase do matter. They are different. So a caps, a capital uh, lettered A, V, A, and I is not the same as the earlier initialization where only A was capital and the remaining things were not capital. So these are two different strings according to uh, uh, us in terms of uh, the input output requirement. So we are given these two strings S1 and S2 and we want to check whether they are same or not. So let's first uh, try this simple method. If there were two integers, we would have checked if uh, x1 equal to equal to x2 do something. This won't work in uh, C. This is something that uh, you may have been used to, to do in case of other languages, but this won't work in C. S1 equal to equal to S2 is not supported because this is not a basic data type. String is not a basic data type and you cannot do this to arrays. That is if array 1 is equal to equal to array 2. In fact, there are two arrays, there are two character arrays. So we have to do the hard work of looping through the character array and checking whether these two arrays are indeed equal. So first thing is find the length of the two strings first. If they are different, if the lengths are different, then of course the two strings cannot be the same. Therefore, you can right away declare that they are not the same. However, if they are uh, the same, they, they still may, the, the lengths are the same, the strings may not be the same. And therefore, we have to check character by character and make sure that they are indeed uh, the same. If they are the same, then declare that the two strings, that is S1 is indeed equal to equal to S2, else declare that they are not the same. So the thing that I want you to, okay, I'm sorry. So is it still being shared? Can somebody yes, tell sir. me? Yes, sir. Oh, it's it's zoomed in, actually. It has zoomed in, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I touched somewhere and... Okay, so give me a minute. I'll just stop sharing and then again share it. I think I did some error. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, what I was saying is if these two these two lengths are the same, only then we uh, we will we are going to check it character by character. Even if the lengths are the same, they the two strings may or may not be the same. And therefore, if they are the same, we are going if the lengths are the same, then we are going to go character by character and check it out. So uh, what I am going to do is I'm yeah. Is there a question? I'm like uh, instead of checking length, uh, it can't be directly when, like when and if the slash zero doesn't match, then when you're going the slash zero doesn't match, the length won't be same. No? Like in direct, that will be redundant. No? Checking the length. In fact, yeah. So that is what I am going to do. That I think there was I, I that is why I my mistake zoomed out. In fact, there was a comment earlier in my earlier slides where it said, "Can we combine both of them?" And that is what the uh, intent of the code is. There is. Nowhere in the code program segment you will see here that uh, you are not going to explicitly compute the length. So please read this program segment and check it out whether it does. I mean, does it do it correctly? That is, does it print out same when the two strings are the same? Or does it make an error? Is there any error? Assume that the uh, strings are appropriately initialized in A and B, although I called them S1 and S2 here.
So any comments are people writing out in the chat that if uh, is this piece of code correct? Will it print out correctly? Uh, if this, I mean, does it work correctly to find out whether the two strings are the same? I have one answer. One person has uh, given the answer. Uh, I won't say whether it is uh, whether the person says it is correct and whether it is correct. I won't reveal any of that. But I would like others to participate. It's an afternoon time after lunch. It can become quite tedious, but still, it would be helpful to participate. So, where is short circuiting here? Uh, Okay, so the short circuiting is about this place. Okay. So what is wrong? Uh, just just no. hold on. Yeah, uh, Kandikeshwar. So Pramath, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the difficulty with short circuiting? Okay, so uh, first of all, I let's let's break it down. Okay, so Pramath is saying that he doesn't know. Okay, so fine. So I'll come to whoever had the question. I think Kandikeshwar. Ma'am, uh, like this while uh, while loop will break when AI is not equal to BI, no, ma'am. AI is not equal to BI. That's correct. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, but um, uh, like this slash zero is also considered a character. So when mm -hmm. If we write a condition if e of i is double equal to slash zero and and v of i double equal to slash zero, won't that be true for the while condition also? It will be. That is the so this program is not correct. In fact, for uh, it fails in the sense it can give a segmentation fault for strings which are same because everything is same. Therefore, up to the end. So let's say the string is. A B the string is let's say Avani. Uh, a is Avani, B is also Avani, the same capitalization. Then uh, at the end of that string, there is a slash zero. Therefore, that will also be matched and still I will be incremented. So we are never getting out of the loop, right? So therefore, we are we need to break this loop at some point. So one way to correct this is if a of so although you go inside the loop when a of i is equal to b of i if a of i uh, is equal to a of i is equal to 0 or b of i is equal to 0 note that this is something which is redundant in the sense that you have gone inside the loop when uh, a of i is equal to equal to b of i so you can check any of them if one of them is slash 0 the other is also slash 0 then you break out of the loop. Remember that you have not yet incremented i and therefore outside the loop you can still check that both a of i and b of i have become zero in which case you should say that it is the same else you should say that it is not the same. So uh, is this program clear? The earlier program was not clear, uh, not uh, correct. Uh, it would it can give us a fault uh, or access elements which are in, which are invalid when you have and uh, when you have two arrays which are the same okay so uh, assuming that this part is clear let's uh, try out another example on strings which is uh, something which is testing whether a string is a palindrome or not. And as you all know that a, palind a string is a palindrome if the string is exactly equal to the reverse of the string. So one way is of course find out the reverse of the string and then use the earlier program which you have already written to check whether S1 is equal to equal to S2. We are again like we did in the first uh, this thing we wanted to find the length and then we wanted to go from 1 to length or 0 to length minus 1. But we did not do that explicitly. We in fact avoided that one pass. We are similarly going to do this in the case of uh, a palindrome. So our pseudocode is as follows. Okay, so uh, these are examples of 
uh, palindromes. I I think many of you would know this. So uh, the mm, the way we are going to design our program is run an index from one to uh, n. And again, one to n is considered in pseudo code. It's not in the C language, so it is zero to n minus one. And another from another index j from n to one, and check if each character keeps matching. The index i is running ahead. The index j is coming behind. That is, index i is running from left to right. The index j is coming from j down to one, one or zero, depending on the um, language. In which case, which is c, it is going to be till zero. And if ith character is equal to the jth character uh, every time, then declare that it is a palindrome. Else, at any point, if you identify that i is not equal to j, declare that it is not a palindrome. So again, is it required that we run it from all the way i, uh, whatever zero to n minus one and n minus one to zero? Is it required? No, in fact, we can stop halfway because as 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 soon as we have seen halfway of the string, we will know whether it is indeed a palindrome or not. So we are going to write code for that. And uh, here is uh, the first attempt code. Please read this and tell me whether uh, this correctly finds out, uh, correctly write, correctly identifies a palindrome. Remember that our string here is in the variable str which is a character array, which has been initialized appropriately. And uh, yeah, so please do not write fresh code because that is difficult for me to parse. Yeah, please look at this code and tell me whether it is indeed correct or not. Yeah, you can have just one index and then do manipulation that is i and n minus i plus n minus i plus one or something like that. But I'm not doing that. I have just kept two uh, high and low, low starts with zero, high goes, high starts with uh, the string length minus one, uh, because that is the last place where the character of that string, last character of the string is there. Okay, so if you say that it is not correct, you have to say why is it not correct. So I have two answers or something, but uh, that is very few in this large class. No, if length is length of the string is two, there is no problem because h will be st still strength length minus one, which is uh, h is one, l is zero. So it will still enter the loop. So that is not an issue. Okay, so now many of you have identified that even when it is a palindrome, uh, so if it is, uh, sorry, if it is not a palindrome, it will uh, still say that uh, so yeah, if it is not a palindrome like A, A, B, B, then it will correctly break out of the loop. However, after when, when we break out of the loop, we are not checking anything. So in fact, we should check whether, uh, why have we broken out of the loop? So if we have broken out of the loop when H is equal to equal to L or H is less than L, in that case, we, we just print that it is a palindrome. Else, we don't print anything because if this is the condition, it means that we have we have identified a palindrome. That is, the loop has successfully reached the mid if it is an odd, or it has crossed over if it is an even, even then still, right? So this this was the mistake, and uh, this can be corrected by doing this. Of course, you can also keep a flag and check why you have broken out of the loop. Uh, this is one way by using these indices only. And again, is H required? I mean, is a different index required? Not necessarily, but uh, at the moment, I have just kept things simple. Okay, so uh, since you had asked for a break, uh, 
uh, after I mean this in the long class we have already finished an hour. I will uh, give you a break. Uh, we'll introduce multidimensional arrays in the remaining part of the class. We'll see how far we go in the multidimensional arrays. Otherwise, we'll take up those things in the next class, which is tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to pause the recording. So I have restarted the recording. So uh, yeah, so now that we have seen single dimensional arrays, uh, it is natural to ask, can we have multidimensional arrays? And multidimensional arrays again uh, occur uh, several times in practice where you have uh, matrices when you have integer multidimensional arrays or character grids. And we are going to see both of them in, in different examples. So let's start with defining multidimensional arrays first. So, uh, okay. So uh, suppose you have you want to have an a multidimensional array which is an integer multidimensional array. You can in fact have uh, a multidimensional array having more than two dimensions. But for today's class, at least we'll restrict our attention to two dimensional arrays, and therefore this initialization or this definition is something which is relevant to us. So matrix is a two dimensional array which has 10 rows and 10 columns. Again, the rows are indexed from 0 to 9. The columns are also indexed from 0 to 9. And this every cell of that is in fact an uh, integer element. Which, by this we mean that whenever you go to that memory location, the bit pattern there is going to be interpreted as an integer. Right. Okay. So uh, the, the things that are of concern to us is how is a two dimensional array stored in memory and that if you have seen this earlier, you will know that it is stored in the row major form and we'll see what implications does it have. And then uh, how do we initialize a two dimensional array? How do we use it? How do we write uh, simple uh, functions, simple, not functions, simple programs using two, two dimensional arrays? which are both integer and character. In today's class, we'll first deal with integer arrays. Okay, so here is one uh, uh, program snippet where this matrix has been given a size which has three rows and four columns. And this is one way of initializing a, a two-dimensional array where it says that uh, the first row contains these elements, which itself is an array, a single dimensional array. And therefore, the initialization is in line with what you would have done for a single dimensional array, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 in this curly braces. Then 5, 6, 7, 8 is the second row or the elements of the second row and then 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, the natural questions are, if you, if you leave some things lesser, that is, if you write braces and if you give just 1, 2, then these elements, that is the element number, the third, uh, I mean, okay, so I should just index it using the matrix, this thing. So matrix of 0, uh, uh, 2 will be initialized to 0 and 0, 3 will be initialized to 0 if you leave these unspecified. That is, if you had just given 1, comma 2 and bracket close, then it is fine. It's okay, but then it says that you would want to leave the remaining elements as 0. Similarly, you can do it at any places. And this is one way of initializing the multidimensional array, which is uh, which is also called as a matrix or a two-dimensional array here. Okay, so what if we write extra numbers? Uh, I, I don't recall, but it is most likely going to give you an error. Just like uh, when we had an array, which is uh, array, which was of smaller size, uh, it is going to give you an error or a warning. At least. No, we don't give a semicolon at the end of each uh, this thing. Okay, so the semicolon here is missing, uh, not at the end of each row, for sure not at the end of each row. I think this semicolon is something which is missing. Let me just quickly check it out in the REPL.IT and I'll confirm it with you. So I think that semicolon is missing, but not the uh, Okay, so I'll leave it to you to check it out. This semicolon is something that I have missed out here. Okay, so, uh, but you certainly don't have semicolons here that these are commas. Okay, so the 
uh, other uh, okay so sorry sorry I, yeah so what i want to show is that uh, how is how are these elements stored in the uh, in memory and the storage is something which is called as a row major ordering we have already seen that array elements are stored contiguously so uh, i mean when we defined arrays array of size 1000 let's say integer array of size 1000 it means that you have 1000 different variables integer variables that you have defined but you are using them using a single name let's say a a of 0 a of 1 up to and so on now when you define this matrix you have defined or you have defined whatever m cross n number of integer elements but there, there is a particular way of uh, storing them and as well as accessing them. So if you want to access the ijth element, you are going to say a of bracket, square bracket i followed by square bracket j. And that is what is going to give you the integer element present at the ijth uh, cell of that array. And now this is the, this is something which is important, which means that uh, if you have a matrix, which is a four cross four matrix, and the elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on, then they are stored in a flat manner as an integer, is as, as a strip where it is stored in row major form. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 are stored together, followed by 5, 6, 7, 8, followed by 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. So this is how it is stored. And I hope I have the next slide. Yeah. Therefore, it is possible for you to initialize the array which is this uh, array in the sense two dimensional array which is the same as matrix matrix earlier using an initialization which is an array initialization which says 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 without the braces uh, nested braces and still it means the same thing because it is just going to look at that strip and initialize it but when you interpret it it is going to be a three cross four uh, two-dimensional array which has three rows and four columns. So this is also a valid initialization. The only thing is if you are doing a valid, doing an initialization like this and if you give fewer elements, the last elements of this matrix are going to be left uninitialized. So this is something which is allowed uh, if, you are, uh, if you are doing a two-dimensional array. So is this clear? So uh, one more thing that I want to say is when you are defining the uh, or when you are declaring this variable matrix which is a two dimensional array and you are initializing it, it is possible to leave out the first uh, dimension of the array unspecified because you are initializing it. So uh, this will calculate how many uh, so depending on uh, this, it is going to calculate how many columns are, uh, how many and appropriately initialize it, right? So uh, this says that the first four entries go into the first row, the next four entries go into the next row and so on. And the remaining things are going to be left uninitialized. So in general, it is okay. example of uh, this multidimensional arrays, I, I will ask you to read this program and tell me what is being uh, printed. Remember, it is our same familiar three cross four matrix. So there is no trick about uh, the initializing zero elements and so on. Okay, so is everybody able to hear me? Okay. Now, yes, so, for a moment there, your voice got cut off, at least for me. Okay, okay, sorry. So, yeah, so I just want you to observe this program and tell me what will be the output of this program.
the session can you just check your output first of all note that there are uh, there are zero to i mean n1 entries printed in this loop there is only a printf here there is also a side effect because it is also doing a plus plus and then there are n2 entries printed here so you must print out these many entries Ma'am, it will print first, then increment, isn't it? I leave it to you. Yeah, but it is post increment, so it will print first and then increment. Okay, so the initial answers were uh, incorrect. Now most of you have corrected it. Whoever is writing the answers. I, I still find that the participation is limited to a few names that I have become familiar with. I would really like that the participation is uh, more and everybody participates in the class. But uh, okay, so just for the uh, sake of completeness, I'm going to run through this program. So I is equal to zero to N1. So let's do it for zero. So zero to, so we have to check out it is in the zeroth row and the second column. So And then, so the, when you are printing, you are just going to print out three. Similarly, in the second row, in the when i is equal to one, you are going to print out seven, and then you are going to increment it to eight. Similarly, in this row, in i is equal to two, you are going to print it out, print out eleven, and then increment it. So three, seven, eleven get printed on new lines first, and then in the next loop which is running from 0 to n2 it is going to print out columns but it is going to print out columns of this last row which is 9 10 but this entry has been modified to 12 therefore it is going to print out 9 10 12 12 so uh, there have been a few incorrect answers there have been mostly correct answers but some of you have missed out that this 11 gets incremented to 12 in the first loop so that that was an error some some of you it, mistook the post increment to be something which would be done before the printing therefore you printed out 4 8 and 12 which is not correct so please try out this program there's nothing special about it it's just testing out your uh, loop indices as well as the post increment that we had seen much much earlier in the start of the class uh, just to remind you of that so we'll stop here when we come tomorrow we are going to deal with multidimensional arrays integer arrays as well as uh, character arrays and do some interesting exercises using that. So I'll stop the recording. If there are questions, I will just wait for a few minutes.